Father in heaven, we thank you. We give you all the glory, all the honor, the power, the praise, all the majesty. You are eternally worthy to receive all glory, all honor, even as you have eternally created all things. They are for your pleasure, the arm were created. Lord, unto you are we gathered, reveal secrets to us. May our hearts indict a good matter. Take all the glory in Jesus' name. Amen, amen and amen. Thank you, Lord. We want to thank the person of the Holy Spirit for the privilege to be here. Say thank you, Holy Spirit. Thank you, Holy Spirit. And also we want to thank our Father, Papa Joshua Aguila. Say we love you, Papa. We love you, Papa. Amen and amen. Amen. Okay. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Uh -huh. We have been looking at the second occult kingdom of the year. Now, I, I noticed while our pastor was exhorting, she was using the word occultic. No, the word is occult. That's a word itself. Yes, sir. Occult. The occult, it's a word all by itself. There are people who operate there. The guys in secret societies, and uh, they are in the occult. It's a world all by itself. They don't do what normal people do. It's a world all by itself. Just like Christianity is a, is a world. But when you now say occultic, you are referring to things that are in that realm. We're not talking about things. We're talking about a world that does exist. Or let us put it this way, realm of existence. So when you say occultic now, you are referring to instruments, things that are from that realm of existence. So please, let's pay attention to the tenses. So I hope you understand the difference now between occult and occultic. And these people don't know. There's a difference between both. If an occult man is sitting listening to you, or we can say an occultist is listening to you, even when you are talking, you can tell you don't know what you are saying. And he can tell this one does know. So the second occult kingdom of darkness, of the air, is an astral kingdom that is exoterrestrial in nature. It's an exoterrestrial nature. And the reason why it is exoterrestrial is simply because for one to gain access into that kingdom, you must be specifically chosen or appointed to be granted access into that realm. One must be chosen or appointed in order to be able to reach that realm of high exoterrestrial. We told you that the, the entities or spirits of that kingdom are known to be demigods. Yes, and that is why the definition of demigods by 
the normal eight man, but the nominal guy on the street. He's a human being who has some extraordinary abilities and all that. But in the occult, that's not how a demigod is seen or viewed or defined. Um, a demigod is in all entirety a spirit or an entity. Entity is a better word to use. So there's nothing human about them. As spirits, or like we say, what you refer to as entities. And this, from a strict occult perspective, this particular realm, kingdom, from the high occult perspective, is the home of 33 million demigods proclaimed in the Vedic metaphysics. And we told you that this second occult kingdom of the air is ruled by an ark spirit known as what? Bavara. Bavara. There's an hyphen. B A. V A R A Barbara. And some esoteric mysteries, mystics, sorry, some esoteric mystics proclaim him to be the father of spirits, even though he's not. He's just the ark spirit in the first, in the second occult kingdom of the air. So he is referred to as what? Father. Please answer us now. They call him what? The Father of Spirits. The Father of Spirits. But now, this, uh, where we want to continue from, is what we just said earlier was just a recap of what we had discussed. But to continue now, this particular. <coughs> Um, occult kingdom is divided into two two major planes. What is known as this is how it is referred to. It is referred to as Grand Division. Grand Divisions. In the mystic palace of some masters, some, not all mystic masters, but for some mystic masters, according to the You know, you know what we mean by mystic masters now? Those who have reached and ascended the high levels of grand masters and gone beyond that level. So, <coughs> according to some mystic masters from the uh, um, what was it I just said? In the mystical palace mystical palace palace sorry I, I i usually say palace but palace you know who've explained what mal palace means yes, amen uh, check your notes who've explained what palace means sastras yes, amen now, is there only one person there? It means you don't even read your notes. Sir. We've explained what palace means. We've explained what sastras means. We've explained even the Vedic. We've explained metaphysics. We took time to explain all those things. So why are you not responding now? 
If you want me to reiterate, there's no time for that. There's so much to share. Okay. But according to some masters, with reference to the mystical palace, the first kingdom, the first division, the first division, like we said, is divided into what? Two planes, known as what? Grand, Grand divisions. Division. So the first division, thank you, Holy Spirit, the first division or plane is known as the casual, casual plane. It's known as the casual plane. It's known as the casual plane. So what's the first plane? Casual, casual, casual plane. plane. And this casual plane is ruled by an ark spirit called Lord Gotami. Gotami. G-O-T-A-M-Y. Gotami. M-Y. I hope you can see it. How do you pronounce it? Gotami. Use American as a lesson. Lord Gotami rules what? Rules what? The casual, the casual plane. He's the act spirit there of the casual planes. Now, you see, Paul did not have the time to really. You know, when you read Ephesians chapter 6, verses 12, when he says, we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities and powers and rulers of the dark, the rulers of the darkness of this age and spiritual wickedness in heavenly places. Now, spiritual wickedness is the fourth plane, yes, sir. which is the fourth kingdom. Yes, sir. Amen. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. And that's the seventh kingdom. Yes, sir. That's where Satan is. Yes. But what we're even looking at now is the realm of darkness, yes, which Paul referred to as powers. Yes, sir. Now, <clears throat> here, in this kingdom, it is already divided into two. Like we told you, it's called the Grand Divisions. Yes, sir. Right? Yes, sir. Now, which is in reference to what? The mystical palace. Now, some masters are of the view that this kingdom is split into two, which is called the grand divisions. And the first division is the casual plane, ruled by what? An ark spirit called what? Logotam. Now, isn't it amazing that this guy here, Lord Gotami, is seen as an ark spirit? Yes. Meanwhile, the head, the ruler of the entire yes. kingdom, yes. second kingdom of the air, is also an ark spirit. Yes. So this will tell you the struggle, the fire. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. So Barbara is the supreme ark spirit in this second plane. But then, sorry, in this second occult kingdom of the air, yes, sir. please answer us. Yes, sir. Uh, yes, sir. You are far away. You are yes, far sir. away. But then, even though Bavara is an ark spirit, he still has even two ark spirits under him in his yes, kingdom. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. That's what we're talking about, yes, right? Sir. And we said that kingdom now is divided into two. Yes, sir. Bavara rules everything. Yes, sir. But the first division is called the casual plane ruled by who now? Lord Gotami. Yes, now, Gotami is a very, very, very peculiar being. But we'll come to, to Lord Gotami very well. <clears throat> I 
I, I was thinking of saying something, but I think explain something, but I think I need to say something before I explain it. Yes, sir. Today's class will be a short class, so that from there, in our next class, we'll just start with the third kingdom of the air, and then finish by the next two weeks, so that we can delve into other areas too. Now, uh, there is what you call etheric. Etheric sphere. I didn't say spear. What? Spear. Okay. I hope you know what you're saying. Now, etheric is from the word etheria. I hope you know. But let's leave the Ethereum because um, if you listen to the likes of Grey Message, Grey Message, this is like a, it's an occultic group actually. I, had, I, I lived with a family that was Grey Message for many years. And I, was, I read all their books in the light of truth abrushing all their books, volumes one, volumes two, volumes three, so that I can be ordained a cross bearer. But I was not ordained. You look at Ekanka. And then, of course, prosecutions. These are various occult groups. Yes, sir. These guys. The amazing thing is that if they analyze the ethereal realm for you, you'll be left with no option than to join them. The analysis on the ethereal realm is phenomenal. And a lot of college professors, so far as what I can still recall in Nigeria, were into either the Green Message or a canker. But you see, it is one thing to say these people are occultic when you have not even listened to them. Mm. And it's a good thing you didn't. Because if you do, if you come for their public lectures, and what they are even explaining to you is the exoteric yeah. aspect. Yeah. But in their public lectures, the analysis they will give you you will be bamboozled. You will be dazed at the high intellectual sagacity they have. A lot of Christians are fools. And I say that respectfully. Some Christians don't reason. There are some Christians you can't really sit down to have an intelligent conversation with. Some people, quite frankly, there are some Christians who are boring to me in talking to them. They are just boring because you cannot engage in anything intellectual with them. But not with these guys. If you sit with them, you don't know when five hours has gone. They will daze you with knowledge. Christians are not interested. And if you are saying everything they say is false, one question you should ask yourself is, why are they that successful? Or why are they going for intellectuals? Like we said, a lot of college professors, and when I mean college professors, I mean the finest of the finest brains. Like I said, I wanted to be part of them. But for some reason, they, they did not initiate me. But we're talking about the finest of the finest brains. 
Do you understand? You are talking. Listen, I don't. I don't know that you are getting what we're saying. I really don't think you are getting what we're saying. Do you understand? I'm talking about people with high yes. IQ. Yes. Listen to a public lecture and join the whole course. You may say they were deluded. No, they were not deluded. Like I said, I read their books. I read their books, attended many of their... In fact, I grew up attending their public lectures because the family that sent me to high school mm -hmm. went into it, the man and the wife, the entire family. That's the truth. I lived with a cousin, a direct cousin. We were both first cousins. But her husband was into the great message. She sent me to high school. I, mean, I was living with them. I lived with them for 10 years. So I was in the thing for 10 years. And when I say... When they have public lectures, the whole place will be packed full. And the people who come, I'm telling you, are college professors from the polytechnics and from the universities. Yes, sir. I'm, I'm, I'm not talking about a master's degree college professor. I'm talking about professors. Yes, <coughs> professors. People, yes. people, that are, people that are referred to as prof. Yes, sir. And so these are people with high mental IQ. And when whoever is giving the lecture, is giving these lectures, these people are fascinated. I was probably around maybe 12, 15, wow. till uh, I think about 17, but I was fascinated at, at what I was hearing. It was from the great message I first heard the term Queen Queen of Heaven. Yes, sir. And I didn't know it was Jeremiah that first revealed it when God spoke to him. But the great message, the analysis about the Queen of Heaven, you'll be fascinated. And like I said, very successful people. And they believe heavily in climate change, as in yeah. taking care of the ecosystem. They yeah. believe in it. They will tell you. And these are guys, to this day before God, apart from personal revelations of the Holy Spirit about angels, yes, sir. about personal revelations I've heard that even angels have come to reveal to me about their world. Angels have their world, the, yeah. the world of angels. Yes, sir. Apart from what angels have revealed to me about their world, I've never heard any man of God. I've listened to many from the 1920s to date. I've listened to, if I tell you men of God, I've listened to on the teachings about angels. I've not heard any who have still been able to give exhaustive details of the angelic, like the great message. If you hear their revelations about the angels, you know, you, you will join them. And this is where it is even the analysis about angels. It's one of the, I believe it is one of the platforms through which they win people. I have never heard any man of God give analysis about angels like the great message. And they will give you scriptures for it. But those guys, their brain is a fascination. That's why when you read that Paul argued mm -hmm. with some of the finest brains in Israel, mm -hmm. you would think that he was just arguing with fools. Mm -hmm. It was even the Christians he called fools. Mm -hmm. Like the Hebrew church, he called them fools. Mm -hmm. yes, the reason why we're telling you this is that even with these guys, this second... Um, called kingdom of the air. Yes, that is even where you have the high, one of the highest level of deception. This is where you have One of the highest levels of deception. Now, if you read Second Peter chapter one, 
when you read from verses 16, Apostle Peter said, we have not followed cunning fables. Yes, sir. But it's, an, it's interesting that he used the word cunning. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. The same, okay, Apostle Paul in Colossians 2 verses 8, he said, beware of Traditional rudiments. And Paul talked about how crafty people can be with their intelligence yes. and sweep you off your feet. Yes, sir. <clears throat> What we're telling you is, listen carefully. Yes, sir. I, I don't know that you are listening, yes, but sir. it is up to you. Yes, sir. But you know, you can pray. You can be a very prayerful person and receive answers to your prayers. Yes, sir. And an occult man can deceive you and collect that answer. In, in my personal life, I've been deceived before. I've been deceived before. But what I'm trying to tell you is, I've been deceived by even Christians. Do you understand? Yes, sir. And the reason why I was deceived by Christians is because I was trusting. I just believe that, oh man, we're Christians. I don't believe this person can. So, but that's even very disappointing even amongst Christians. But I'm talking about an occult man. Yes, he looks at you and says, this person, forget me. Whatever you think you have, I can take it away from you. Mm. And when we say, like in our church, when we say, go to the Ivy Leagues, you will see people. It's true. If for anything, you will see college professors and see their IQ. Even you, the Christian, you'll be asking yourself whether you have been serious in your life. How many born-again, tongue-talking Christians are Harvard professors? But a born-again will go and sit under a Harvard professor that is probably an occultist. And be learning from him, from him. Okay. If you are not willing to use your brain, you are not helping yourself at all. Now, having said what I said, we said. We told you, you have what you call the etheric yes. sphere. Yes, sir. Sorry, the etheric sphere. Yes, sir. <coughs> In this kingdom, there is a wall. Yes, sir. This second occult kingdom of the air is a wall all by itself. Yes, sir. It's a wall because the division of the planes, follow this carefully. The first plane we told you is called what? The casual plane. Please answer us now. Now, if you check your dictionary very well for the word etheric, they will tell you that you are relating with something beyond the clouds. But I thought the thing is already in the air. It is already astral. This is even the second occult kingdom of the air. Yes, sir. It has its own cloud. Yes, sir. That will tell you it, ha it is a complete world all by yes, itself. Sir. Yes, sir. It has its own heaven. Yes. Follow this carefully. Now, under scientific analysis, when you are referring to something e etheric, 
you are referring to something that has to do with carbon monoxide, yes, sir. oxygen, okay. hydro oxygen, hydro this, hydro molecules and all those things. Which you want to refer to as particles. Yes, sir. Do you understand? Yes, sir. But according to the analysis, in the this well trying to tell you something about this second plane now. Yes, sir. The second, the first division. Yes. Will, like we told you, there's a grand division. Yes, sir. It's divided into two. Yes. The first plane or the first division is called what? Casual. The second one is the etheric sphere. Do you understand? Yes, so now you have moved beyond something above the clouds, above the heavens within that realm. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. See. Look up, please. Many, many years ago in a pastor's meeting, a man of God took time to explain. I used to have that tip. I don't know where it is anymore. But a man of God used to explain. He explained many, many years ago, many, many years ago, the difference between demons, unclean spirits, evil spirits, fallen angels. It was fascinating to me. Of course, I knew some things. But what really fascinated me was when that man of God took time in details to analyze evil spirits. Yes, sir. Ah. Generically in the churches, we call unclean spirits, demons, or everything, yes, sir, evil spirits, yes, sir, unclean spirits. Yes, sir, Why? Because we have Holy Spirit, right? Yes, sir. And so because we have Holy Spirit, anything contrary to the Holy Spirit is what? Evil spirit. Yes, when this man of God analyzed evil spirit, what fascinated me about the analysis, which I later confirmed to be true, was when he described the nature, the image of an evil spirit. The peculiar thing about an evil spirit, which that man of God said, and later on I discovered it, and there's a reason why we're bringing this up, because we're looking at the et etheric sphere. Yes, sir. Although the man of God was not teaching metaphysics, he was just having a pastor's meeting. He was teaching them. And I watched it. But he did say the difference between an evil spirit from a demon, he said, is the shape that evil spirits take. And that got my attention. And he said, the shape of an evil spirit is so strange and peculiar that it can be easily, easily, obviously unnoticed. And what did he say about an evil spirit. He said an evil spirit can be so small. It can be as small as a dot. Wow. Can be as, as small as a dot on someone's body. But what it would do to that person? To finish that person. So I said, ah, how can a spirit, an evil spirit, be as small as a dot? You see this thing we call unforgiveness. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Evil spirits feed on it heavily. Mm. 
evil spirits they easily enter people's mind it's very easy like we said they are as small as a dot you will not notice The only way to deal with it is if you know that an evil spirit is responsible for this thing, not a demon, an evil spirit. There's an evil spirit in this person's life. But it can be as small as a dot. Now, the reason why we're telling you this is because if you check the dictionary or you go on Google and look for the analysis of etheric sphere, it will tell you something about chemicals, carbon monoxide, and all those things. Yes, and those things are particles. Yes, but really, in metaphysics now, it's a world <coughs> with intelligent activity going on. Yes, sir. And that reconciles with what that man of God said. Even though he didn't explain it in the metaphysical side, I don't know whether he knows the metaphysical aspect, but he was saying something in that regard. Yes, sir. There are some people, there's a thought that can be on their mind. Yes, the thing will never go away. Jesus. And if the Lord can open your eyes to see you, you'll see that dot there. That's the thing responsible for why this person behaves this way. No. Yes, sir. Like even when you look at addiction, in some people's life. Evil spirits, no unclean spirits. If you didn't get that, uh, yeah, I don't I know. Yeah, God yeah. help you. I got it. Just ignore what we said, all right? Let, let's, let's just. Now, this etheric sphere, which is the second kingdom, which is the second division, is is ruled by an entity known as Sant Goli. S A N T Sant S A N T Sant Goli. And Sant Goli is among one of the greatest is among one of the greatest power in the realm of darkness. And the reason why he's among one of the greatest power of darkness is because in this realm, in this particular realm called the etheric sphere, this is where you have an advanced manipulation going on that one can never dictate if one is a member, except the person is delivered. Let's give you... an example. You all have your Bibles here. So open your own Bibles. Go to Matthew chapter... Now, look at verses. Verses 8. Yes, sir. It says, again. Can we read, please? Yes, again. Sir. You see that? Yes, sir. 
all the kingdoms of the world and their glory. Now, look at the war showed. The word showed is the Greek word diknomi. D E I K N U M I. Diknomi. Now, diknomi means to point out. For you to understand what we're about to show you. Go to verses 5. <clears throat> then the devil took, mark the word, took. The word took is the Greek word Paralambano, P E R A L A M B A N O, P A R A L A M B A N O, P A R A L A M B A N O, Paralambano. Paralambano means to aggressively take. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Mm -hmm. To show strong personal initiative. To associate with oneself. What we're reading here that people don't understand is what we're looking at here. Yes, sir. The metaphysics. Jesus and metaphysics. Mm -hmm. yes, sir. How he was encountering agents of darkness. Yes, sir. Then the devil aggressively, aggressively took him up into the holy city and did what? Set. Yes, Are you looking at your Bible? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. He did what? He set. S-E-T. Yes. Set there is the Greek word histamine. Histamine. Histamine means to set in balance. You know balance. Yes. To establish, to place, to make one to stand. To be a bystander. So he brought him, he took him aggressively and set him at his summit. Like a scale. On the pinnacle of the temple, and did what? And pointed out. Diknomi. You're not getting it. When the Bible says he showed Jesus, he put a dot in his mind to see the whole world. You're not getting it. Let's close.
what we're talking about here yes, sir. is this guy. Yeah. Oh, these were the these were the operations of Saint Goli. And boom, pointed out. That's how we said, an evil spirit can come like a dot. Yes, sir. Sometimes you can just see a picture drop in your mind. Boom. Now, now. But notice, the reason why we read that scripture, the whole rationale, is to show you that the devil did give Jesus a vision. Yes, he sir. gave Jesus a vision. Yes, sir. And Jesus saw what the devil showed him. Yes, sir. There are certain imaginations people carry in their mind. Sir. It's an evil spirit at work. That's why what they carry in their mind, they think is true. Yeah. But it's not as if they are, they are occultists to know that these things are happening. Yeah. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. But those who are even in the occult with such operations, are even deceived themselves by Saint Goli. Because there are many masters in this realm who have talked about how they have seen Abraham. They have seen Muhammad. Yes. yes. Wait, 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 wait. They have seen Muhammad. Some say they have even seen David. We're telling you occultic guys. And not just anyhow occultic person. As in, I'm talking about... Because already, these operations are already... Astra, already in the heavenlies. Yeah. So to them, they believe. So that will tell you, to them, this Saint Goli, this realm of life looks like heaven. Yes, sir. Jesus. You are yes, not sir. getting this. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Some have talked about seeing Daniel. Oh, my God. Some have talked about seeing Krishna, Hare Krishna. Some have said they've seen Buddha. Yeah. Yeah. Why? Because these are so-called holy men. Yeah. 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 Whether from the Jewish side, from the, from the other religious beliefs, by their own definitions of holy men, according to their religious beliefs, these people, Seen as holy men. And these holy men are presumed to be in heaven. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. And so there are some masters who have been deceived. Yes. You see why this guy, St. Goli, is, called, is seen as one of the greatest power. Remember in Acts chapter 8, there was a guy called Simeon yes. who used sorcery to bewitch yes. the people. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. See that? Yes, sir. These were like operations of what? Saint Goli. Because people started seeing him as what? A great power of God. But you couldn't really say that was actually the operation of Saint Goli in his life. But I'm just using that picture. But I'm not saying that's the exact example. That's the spirit of, that's the witchcraft code of uh, gr mighty power of great illusion. Really. But here we are even talking about masters. Grand, super grand masters, ascended masters who have been deceived to think that all these guys are the people they are meeting. Mm -hmm. But unknown to them, these are astral spirits, astral entities putting up their images. And Saint Goli is behind this. So that's just the unique thing about this kingdom. But like, you see why we said, even the finest brains of high mental intellectual sagacity like college professors more, are even in the occult deceived 
how much more the grandmasters who are masters in the in these things in the so-called esoteric knowledge they have even been deceived too because some of them can tell you without any shadow of death the, any shadow of doubt they met abraham yes. meanwhile it was not abraham they met it's just an astral entity But like we said, he can drop. Yes, sir. Because one thing people don't understand, you see, there are dynamics in visions. Yes, sir. Okay, there's somebody, how many of you have heard people use terminologies like, the Lord laid on my heart oh, yeah. to do this yes, thing? But which Lord? No, there's nothing wrong in saying it. There's nothing wrong. Relax. There's nothing wrong in saying it. See, which Lord? And the thing is that the only way you can take such a person serious is if you have been able to prove such a person's Christian work yes, sir. with God. That time and time again, the person has come to tell you what the Lord said and you have seen it happen. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. You are not following yes, the rest yes, You've seen it happen. You, yeah. you know this person. When the person says the Lord lays this thing on my heart, you know yeah. this person is not yeah. joking. Yes, sir. Do you understand? Yes, sir. <laughs> it's like our people are now coming to tell you the Lord laid something inside. Yeah. You have to take it seriously. Of course. Yes, sir. Do you understand? Yes, sir. But even, you know, there are some people, they may not be as prominent like our papa, but the Lord does show yeah. people things. There are some people, yes. you are not yes. even answering yes. yourself. Yes, there are some people, exactly. God does show them things. Yes. But I, I, there are some people, I've met people who have come to tell me the Lord laid, the Lord laid you in my, and I just know, this one is just, it's just a joker. Just that you can't tell them. And we pretend to listen. Oh. But I know the Lord didn't do jack. I just know it's one spirit. And they may not be lying. They may not be lying, but they are just deceived. What was shown there? Okay. Have you been blessed? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. All right. In our next class, we'll go into the third kingdom of the earth. This is what we'll just give you for now concerning this kingdom. And that is why even when imaginations come or thoughts come, you, you need to prove them. By the Spirit of God. Yes, and you will know. You will know. I mean, you are a child of God, aren't you? Yes, sir. You have the yes, Holy Spirit. Sir. Yes, sir. You can tell. And if it's something you are not sure of, take the matter to your leader. Yes, and discuss it with your leader. Yes, Someone say, I don't have any leader. Well, that's... You are at a loss now if you don't have a leader. Because that's one of the benefits of having a leader. A leader should know more than you. And of course, if you don't have a leader around, then leave the matter alone. It's not worth discussing at all. As long as you don't have a leader that can appraise that thing you say you saw. And you know, there are some people, even when they say they see things, and maybe it looks like the leader is not giving much attention to them, they think that the leader is not taking them serious. No. The thing is, whether or not that thing can even work for you. What will it do for you? The one you know it has not worked for, has not worked for you. Is it the new things that are coming? That's not how it works. Take it this way. God will never waste his resources. If God had already given you something before that you never took advantage of, you think he will give you something new again? He won't. He will just give you space and leave you where you are. That's how God operates. Praise God. Hallelujah. All right, so have you been blessed now? Yes, sir. Any question, please? Please use the mic, please. Amen. 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 Thank you, precious Holy Spirit of God. First and foremost, we'd like to especially thank our Father, Daddy Joshua and Gila, and we'd like to thank you, sir, most esteemed Brother Osi King. Yeah, sir, God. we have a question. Um, Based off of what we were taught, what if someone like comes for, and they talk about how there's like a reoccurring thought that keeps coming to them? Or that's one part of the question. This other part is also still connected. 
and they have like an imagination, like say something, like a matter was brought to them and this matter that was brought to them, they were very, very angry and scenarios start playing in their head. Like imagination starts that's, playing in their that's head. That's just human, it, it, that's just human reaction. She's just react. What we're discussing here has nothing to do with that. We're talking about masters, grand masters. The person you, the person you're talking about is the person in the occult. Is the no. person spiritual? No, that, this does not apply to them at all. Okay. Does Jesus look like a playboy to you no. or something? Yeah, no, is Jesus not the superior in knowledge? Yes. Yes, sir. Yeah. That's what, I don't do, not those kind of. I already know the direction you are going. Not one person that they don't know they are right from left. That's not. Those are not the people. Either. That one is. They are just reacting to their own, and forces can take advantage of those. Mm. No doubt. So ask your question. How do you help such a person? Well, the thing is that it is whether or not they want to be helped if they bring up the matter to talk to you about it. You understand? First of all, you have to know whether these people are teachable. Mm -hmm. If there are people who can listen. If you tell them don't do this thing, whether they will listen to you. And if you know that there are people who cannot listen, you just have to leave them. At most, you can just pray for them. The thing is that they are, those kind of people, they have to be victims to learn. Jesus. That's just the truth. There are people like that. They just have to be victims to learn. If you know that what they are about to do is business. That's just the truth. <coughs> but we trust that, of course, when you pray to work, praise God. All right. Any other question, please? Um, please first, yeah. Yes, sir. Well, first of all, I'd like to thank the person of the Holy Spirit, Hallis Team Papa Joshua and Gila, and also Hallis Team Prophet Osi King, sir. Um, I recall um, there was a particular message by um, Most Hallis Team Prophet Kenneth e. Hagen where he talked about where he had an experience where um, an entity appeared to him, uh, proclaiming to himself to be Jesus. He was bright, but had a crown on his head. And when Prophet Kenneth E. Hagen noticed that, I remember Revelations. Uh, realized that um, Jesus has not been crowned, crowned yet. Was that an example of... That's, that's an entity called Jesus Ajonichi. We'll talk about that. We'll talk about that in maybe in one of the modules. But there's an entity called Jesus Ajonichi. He manifests that way. He does manifest from time to time. And those are for people who are entering their second initiations in which yeah. they encounter him. And, all that. and he is also an entity of great deception. People fall for those kind of this thing. The Jesus that visited me was not wearing any crown. But that's Jesus at Johnny Chim. He's just, he's one entity. He does do those things. He does manifest. So, yeah. Advance the question. Praise God. All right. Blessed be God. Blessed May the Lord God. bless you. You will not fear. You will not be a victim of deception. Amen. The right hand of the Lord will sustain you. In Jesus' name. Amen. God bless you. We're dismissed.